So the examples that we've been working on in class have started requiring more and more registers in order to operate. Um, registers are very important parts of all digital logic circuits, especially uh, computers, uh, CPU circuits, which is kind of what we're working our way towards uh, in this last section of the class. Um, so this video is going to talk about how we can use multiple registers together in a single unit called a register file. So before we get to the register file itself, I want to introduce a new component. Uh, this component that you see on the screen is what's called a tri-state buffer. And the way that it works is I have this input B, which is some uh, uh, vector of binary values, right? I also have this other input A, which acts as kind of a gatekeeper. So if A is high, then B is just going to flow right through the tri-state buffer. If A is low, then B will not be able to flow through the tri-state buffer. So what you see here that we use the signal Z to indicate high, impedien high impedance, which is basically blocking the flow. It's basically off at this point. It's not a zero, it's not a one, uh, it's just nothing. And so what are these used for? Well, consider the case where I have an output that I want to select from multiple different registers. I can use these tri-state buffers to select which register is going to be active at any given point in time. Um, let's take a look at an example. Here is a register file. So I know there's a lot going on here, but let's break it down. The first thing that I want you to notice are the registers themselves. So over here I've got four registers, right? And they all contain eight bits. So we call this a four by eight register file. That means we've got four registers, each that contain eight bits. Now I want to be able to read these registers. I also want to be able to write to these registers, but I need to have a way of telling the register file which register I want to read from and which register I want to write from. Let's start with the writing operation first. Over here we see I've got two signals coming in to help me um, track write operations. One of them is an address. So an address is going to be which register do I want to write to? Since there are four registers in this example, I need two bits to accomplish this. So this is register 00, 0, 0 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? So if I say register 0, 1, that means I'm going to write to this particular register here. You'll notice that these values are fed into a decoder. So exactly one of these signals will be high at any given point in time. The rest will all be low. So what does that mean? That means that these load signals Right? Of these four load signals on these registers, only one of them will be high at any given point in time. That means I can only write to one of these four registers at any given point in time. So we see that even though the data is fed into all four of them, by keeping the load signals low on most of these registers, it, this data is not going to be read in. Only when I move the load signal high on one of these registers by specifying an address will I actually read in that data value. The second bit that we see down here controlling the writes is called a write enable. Basically, if this is high, that means we want to perform the writes. If this is low, that means we don't actually want to write anything. We just want everything to stay the way that it is. Um, when this signal is low, that means actually all four of these load signals are also low. So the registers are not writing any values at that current moment. So that's the write operation. Now let's talk about the read operation. Um, in this particular case, we're able to read two of these four registers at any given point in time. We call these read ports. So I see one read port here and one read port here. And you can see that the reads are actually controlled by tri-state buffers. So let's take a look at how that works. I have a read address going in, much like I had a write address going in. And that address, is again, is being fed into a decoder. That means that exactly one of these signals will be high at any given point in time. Those signals are then being fed into these tri-state buffers. So what does that mean? That means only one of these tri-state buffers will be active at any given point in time. So let's say this one is active. This one will be off, this one will be off, this one will be off, which means that the contents of this register will be output to this bus, and that will be the output of this particular read port. You see I have a second read port here that behaves in much the same way with its own set of tri-state buffers. So it allows me to read two values, two register values at once instead of just one. And much like we saw with the write bit, with the write enable bit, we also have a read enable bit. So when this is high, we'll see a value here. When this is low, we actually won't see a value on these outputs at all. They'll just be nothing. 
So that's how a register file works. You can actually extend this to include as many registers as you want with as many bits as you want. Um, the next thing that, that I'd like to talk to you about, uh, oh, uh, before we get to that, here's what the block diagram looks like. So if you ever use these in your circuits, you actually don't need to sketch all of this out unless I specifically ask you to. It's perfectly acceptable to use a block diagram for this purpose in your circuits. You see I've got the data going in, the write address, the write enable, the read address, the read enable twice, once for each read port, and then two read values coming out, one for each read port. So the next thing that I'd like to talk to you about is how do we actually implement register files in VHDL? And in order to make that happen, we have to use a new construct, one that we haven't seen before, called an array. Um, arrays are not particularly difficult. You are going to need to do this on the final lab. So I'm not actually going to show you how the register file is implemented in VHDL, but I will show you the technique that you can use to implement the register file in VHDL. So here we see uh, on this second line, right, on the second line here, I'm actually creating a type. Reg file type is array 0 to register file size minus 1. So in this case, if I wanted four registers, right, I could say 0 to 3. That indicates that my array is going to hold three values. But what are those values actually going to be? So of word indicates what I want this array to actually contain. And if you look at the first line, we see that word is defined as a standard logic vector from word size down to zero. So word size in this case is 16 bits, right? So what do I have? I have an array in this case of four 16-bit values. I think it might actually be more than four in this particular case. I think it might be eight 16-bit values. So this array is actually the register file. And then I declare it as a signal, right? Reg is a signal of type reg file type. So what does that allow me to do? That allows me to do things like this. This is a register assignment. I want register two to be equal to the value of register one plus the value of register four. I can assign multiple registers at once by specifying ranges. I can specify individual bits by using two indexes. What is this saying? This says, go to the third register, find the fifth bit of that register, and set that bit to be high. Or if I want to, right, I can also use indexing based off of other variables. So here, x and y are signals. Int converts these to integer types. That is a type within VHDL, much like in Java or MATLAB or other programming languages. And so this is basically copying. Copy reg the register at address y into the register at address x. So using this technique, using this array, you should be able to actually implement a register file. In fact, that is one of the things that I'm going to ask you to do on lab five. So finally, to wrap this up, um, I briefly wanted to introduce this concept of multifunction registers. So sometimes we want our registers to do more than just reads and writes. Other times we want them to be able to clear instead. We want to be able to reset them to nothing. Um, so if that's the case, it's pretty simple. I can just introduce a multiplexer. And now I have the option to read in many different values to my different registers. So in this particular case, we see I've got um, a 4 to 1 mux. One of the inputs is 0, right? One of the inputs is uh, data in, data in value, right? Another one of the inputs is the output of the register itself, just the output. So what does that mean? That means that I've got a few possible options as to um, what the register value can be. It can either maintain its previous value, that's controlled by the load signal. It can be cleared, that's controlled by the zero signal. Or it can read in a new value. It can read in whatever these data input values are. Um, but the big thing to take away here is that I can assign whatever whatever operations I want to the inputs of this MUX. Maybe I want it to be an inverter. Maybe I want it to be addition or subtraction or multiplication, like we've been talking about in previous videos. Um, it's simple. I just add additional inputs to this MUX, use larger MUXs if I need to, right? And then my registers will have multiple output signals to control the select bits of the MUX, but they will be able to perform multiple operations besides just reading and writing. Okay, that about wraps it up for our section on registers. Uh, the final video for this course is going to be about um, addition and logic units.